Next question is from Captain Mata. Is it better to squat lighter weight ass to grass versus heavier weight at 90 degrees? Oh, boy. It depends who we're talking to. Generally speaking, yep. by the way, this is considering you have good mechanics, good form, and good stability. Okay? Somebody who has doesn't have the uh, doesn't have good or sufficient stability or mobility, squatting ass to grass is not a good idea. You want to work your way to that with your stability and your mobility. But all things being equal, if we're talking to the average person who wants to develop overall strength, functionality, and well-developed legs, full full range of motion is typically better. Now, for some athletes, uh, it's actually better sometimes to do shorter range of motion, yeah. even higher than 90 degrees. In fact, you'll see basketball, basketball players oftentimes will do – they won't even go down to 90. They'll do uh, – they'll stop, you know, like a, you know, halfway down. Uh, to 90 and work on that range of motion because it contributes more to their... Uh, their That's the only time I, I see yeah. value in that is if it's very sport specific. Everybody else should be working towards the deeper squat. Sure. If you can. Yeah. Even if you can't do it, uh, and I agree, I wouldn't recommend going lighter weight and then forcing yourself to do it. You should work on your hip and ankle mobility, which is normally the, the limiting factors uh, that won't allow somebody to get that deep in a squat. So I think that for the average population that mm -hmm. just wants to build muscle, lose body fat, be healthy, those people I think should all be working towards the you know ass to grass type yeah. of squat. And if they can't, working on the mobility to be get there. Be strong and functional. And I mean, it, what promotes better positions, like everyday positions where you're going to be down in and you're going to be sitting in, in a squat more, it's going to be lower than 90 degrees. And so, you know, to be able to navigate in that position and have strength in that, also, it's going to help to promote uh, more stability around, you know, the hips and the mm -hmm. joint. And so that way, you know, you're going to alleviate a lot of pain that's going to come up in the future. And so, you know, there's a lot of things to consider with that. But yeah, the only other uh, instance I would say like 90 degrees is if it's a performance driven uh, pursuit. It was life changing for me to, to work towards this. I mean, those that have been listening for a long time know this about my journey, but when I was competing on stage and, and, you know, looked the best I've ever looked, uh, I had terrible squat mobility. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't break 90. Uh, and then after competing, spent a really long time, probably a couple of years of really focus on it. And the benefits of that for me have been crazy. Like I, I my hip and back pain is like gone. Yeah. Right? You used to get back pain all every the time, time squatted. all the time. Yeah. yeah. And then that's what kept me from doing it so much was it was just part of the process. It was like, Oh, if I'm squatting, I'm be ready for my back to be on fire. So, you know, work in, and instead of caring about the weight and I could squat decent weight, uh, back then, but now I, I see one, I see more development with less weight. So I can be squatting less yeah. weight and see my legs as developed and then eliminating all the pain. And that in itself, I think, I think for most people, that should be yeah. a good goal or direction. Yeah, the other people that I would say wouldn't need to train with such a low squat would be a power lifter. Uh, you ba power lifters are very specific. Again, it's performance based, right? Yep. If you for a power lifter, you want to squat as low as as required in order to get uh, clearance and then get strong there because uh, str getting stronger, going any lower, might not really give you any particular value in your competition. But across the board. Your goal should be to get to that point, uh, and if you have the stability and mobility to do it, then train that way. It's then that's true for every body part, every single body part, every single exercise. The fuller range of motion performed safely with good stability mm -hmm. is going to be superior, generally speaking, than a shorter range of motion.